Hello, hello, good morning, good afternoon, good night, doesn't matter what time you're watching me. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and welcome to Manlaka Broadcast to the Health Bulletin for today. Today we're going to have a very interesting health bulletin. I talked a little bit about this before, but today we're going in, in a different in a different route, okay? We're talking about the toxins, okay, in our uh, beauty products, in our cosmetics, in our personal care products, in our shampoo, in our creams, in our lotions, in our cleaning products, in our cooking wear, in everything that we use, there's toxins that we're putting into our body that is causing disease. Okay, and it's causing pain in our body, okay? And we, today we're going to talk on how we can reduce our toxic load, how we can reduce the exposure to those toxins. What can you do in your home? What can you do in your, in your, in your, in your bathroom, in your house, in your, with, your, with your beauty care, with everything that you use to reduce exposure to toxins? Because, I mean, they are there and that's not too much to do if you just go to the store and buying the stuff. But what can you do? to reduce the amount of exposure and the amounts of chemical that you put in your body through it. Because remember that everything that you put in your skin, that you smell also, everything gets into your bloodstream. If it gets into the bloodstream, then it needs to go through the liver to be cleaned up. And the liver had to convert all those toxins, okay, that, that you're taking into something that is not as damaging. So then we can eliminate it to the intestine and we can eliminate it through the uh, uh, kidneys. But if we have our body and our, and our liver overload and our digestive system are not working right and the kidneys are not working right, we're not going to be able to eliminate it. The liver is not going to be able to do the job. So how, what can we do about that? We need to lower the load, lower the load. But before we do that, I want, to say, I want you to watch this video and let me give you a disclaimer. This is not, this is just for us to teach you. This is something that uh, it's an article that it was done, and it's, it's uh, and it's used only to teach you. Okay, so uh, producer, can you put the video real quick, please? Dog report tonight. It was startling to learn a number today. A hundred and twenty is the answer. One hundred and twenty chemicals in care products, cream, shampoos, used every day by women. Most of them untested, and a lot by men as well. Today, even lawmakers said it was time for a wake-up call, and ABC senior national correspondent Jim Avila has those details. The average woman applies 12 beauty products to her body every day, 120 chemicals. For men, it's six cosmetics and 80 chemicals. And few, including Betty Lee Hansen, think much about what's in them. No, I don't. Shame on me. But right now, no one has the authority to help her, not even the government. So here are some of the chemicals advocates say Americans put on their body every day. From formaldehyde, a known carcinogen, and dioxane in some shampoos, to lead on your lips, parabens possibly linked to cancer and deodorant, even mercury in skin lightening creams, toluene known to cause headaches and nail polish, and diethylphthalate linked to allergies, hormone disruption, and dermatitis in perfume. Europe has banned 1,200 such chemicals, the U.S. only 10. So critics say cosmetic makers mix a riskier brew of the same product for domestic use. Companies think that their European customers deserve safer products. There is now a move in Congress to pass a bill regulating cosmetics by summer, requiring labeling all ingredients and prohibiting chemicals linked to cancer or reproductive problems. Cosmetic companies spent three and a half million dollars lobbying against the bill, saying it would curtail innovation and compromise trade secrets. Until Congress acts, advocates recommend finding the shortest label with the fewest ingredients. And if you can't pronounce them, don't use it. Jim Avila, ABC News, Washington. I hope you listen carefully to this video, okay? Do you hear what he said that we ladies use about 120 chemicals in our body every single day and men use about 80 and there's some men out there, you know, that are using more than 80. You know what I mean by that. Okay. You know what I mean by that. So we put in that many chemicals, but the one thing that I want to correct that and I stayed wrong in the last video that I did about products that I was talking in the last video that you can go and search in the Malacca broadcast uh, YouTube channel is the one that I talk about the different ingredients and I give you the, the what they cost, every different ingredient. Today, we're not going to be talking about every different ingredient. Today, we're going to cause what we can do to reduce the toxic. 
But if you want to know what they do, then you can go back to that particular video. But in that video, I said that the that in America they only uh, uh, banded the 12, 12 ingredients, and in uh, in Europe one hundred and twenty. But if you listen to the to the uh, video real, real fine, the video said that in Europe they banded uh, um, one thousand two hundred. They said twelve hundred. That's one thousand two hundred ingredients that they ban from uh, cosmetics and cleaning products and personal care products that they're still using in America. And this particular video is about seven years old. And I still see when I go and read labels, because that's another thing, people, we need to read labels. So we know what we're putting on in our skin, what we're putting on in our house, what we're washing our clothes with, all this stuff. We need to read labels, okay? And we're not reading the labels, but when I go over there and I read the labels, they still have all the nasty ingredients. They are not good for our body, okay? And remember what I always tell you, we need to be healthy. We need to make sure that we, you know, lower the toxin load of our bodies and make the, 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 the our body work easier so that they, the body can work in the highest healing potential so that we can fulfill our, our, our God-given purpose. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to do that. So, producer, can you put my PowerPoint so we can start this journey? Okay, so we're going to talk about how to reduce the toxin exposure. From personal care, from personal care products, and also, you know, in the house, and also uh, with uh, cleaning products and things like that. So the next slice. So what is the toxic load? Toxic load refers to the harmful chemicals, and those harmful chemicals are called xenobiotics. They're synthetic chemicals, foreign to the body. Synthetic chemicals are not only in, 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 in chemical stuff, they're also in foods. You know, many of the vitamins that they uh, uh, call themselves adding into cereals and adding into different uh, foods are synthetic. And if they're synthetic, then the body is not recognizing it like the natural ones that come into the body. So you have to make sure you read, you know, you know about that. So those are chemicals that accumulate in the body through exposure to things such as air, water pollutant, numerous category of food and additives, chemicals in personal products and household cleaner, medication, plastic, environment exposure, and even herbicide and pesticides. So we need to avoid as much as we can all those things. So how can we start reducing our toxic load? The first thing that we need to do is use non-toxic personal hygiene products like cosmetics and sunscreens. Make sure that we look at, at things that doesn't have any uh, triclosan. Triclosan is like an antibiotic. They don't have no parabens, no phthalates, no sodium laurel, no bisphenol, no formaldehyde, no aluminum. And the list of ingredients is longer than that. But those are the most common ones that you can find in almost anything that have to do with cosmetics and skin products and things like that. So how can you figure it out, you know, which are the better ones? You can go to EWG or go to uh, Skin Deep at the link that we have over here. It's called www.cosmeticdatabase.com. You can go there and they, you can compare. And it can tell you, they, they have a scale that they give them by color, and you can see which are the most toxins and which are the less toxins, okay, in that. But what I want you to know is that most most of these uh, uh, in toxins are endocrine disruptors, they're carcinogens, they're allergens, they're obesinogens. Obesinogens are chemicals that are uh, capturing your fat cells, and that's why you don't you don't lose any weight. Sometimes there, there are people out there that they're eating good, they're eating right, they're exercising, they're doing all the things that they're supposed to do, and they're still not losing weight. Why? Because maybe their toxic exposure is so high, and they have some of those toxins that are obesinogens that are uh, hosted inside the fat cells, and it's not letting go. These are the people that when they do a detox, a real detox, and those uh, uh, fat cells start burning, burning out and rupturing, then they release all those toxins that those are the people that get real sick when they do a detox, okay? And those things, all those carcinogens and all those uh, uh, endocrine disruptors, they, they cause inflammation. The inflammation causes oxidative stress, which is the damage of the cell, oxidating the, of the cell, like a, like, a rust, like a rust metal, for example, or like an apple when it gets uh, brown, when you cut it and get brown, that they are uh, oxidized, the same thing happened to the cells, and then that caused disease, cancers, and all kind of other chronic diseases. Why? Because our bodies are not working in uh, properly. Those toxins also damage the digestive system. 
Okay, and when they damage the digestive system, that means that when you eat, you're not going to be absorbing properly the nutrition on your food. Plus, the damage in the lining on the intestines, that means that things are leak, things that doesn't supposed to leak out are going to be leaking out into the system, causing inflammation and causing autoimmune diseases as well. Remember that an autoimmune disease is not necessarily, uh, uh, you know, people t when the people talk about autoimmune disease, they think is that the body attacking itself. It's not necessarily the body attacking itself. An autoimmune disease is when something foreign, a pathogen, a virus, a bacteria, or something that, that uh, extra that came out, feces, on digestive food, whatever it was that came out of the digestive system, is it, it, traveling through your lymphatic system and, and then it get lost in, in an area of your body. Let's say, for example, that, that you have a mosquito in the wall and you take a, 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 a mosquito a killer. If you hit the mosquito with the mosquito killer, you're just going to kill the mosquito. Mosquito. But if you shoot the wall, to sh I mean, if you shoot the mosquito with a with a pistol, you're not only gonna die and kill the mosquito, you're gonna make a hole in the whole world. That's the, in the whole wall, and that's exactly what happened when we are taking, when we are uh, 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 the body is attacking the body when something foreign is there. So it's not necessarily that it's attacking the body; it's attacking that foreign uh, particle. But then, because it's in that area, it damages the whole area. And that is what is an autoimmune uh, uh, disease. And we want to avoid all of that. So we need to start reducing our toxic load. So let's start the first tip that I have for you. The first tip that I have for you is first, like I told you before, go to the EWG skin database so that you can get healthier choices. Make your personal care routine simpler. Don't use so much stuff. You know, sometimes I, you know, um, when I don't have nothing to do, which is hardly any ever, I watch all these makeup tutorials and stuff like that because, you know, I want to learn how to put my makeup and look prettier and stuff like that. And they put so much stuff, they put so much stuff that sometimes I think it's not so unnecessary to put so much stuff. It's like one 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 pot of, of, of a cream to a top of another cream and the top of another cream and the top of another foundation and the top of another corrector and the top of another powder. Those all those things have chemicals and that loaded of toxins that you're putting into your skin that your skin is gonna absorb. 60% of that is gonna go into your bloodstream and it's gonna cause chaos in your body. So try to lower your, your, your daily routine of products that you use. Okay. Uh stop a stop the harsh chemical process processes to your hair like relaxer i don't know if you ever heard but for all my uh, african-american and black ladies out there uh, they they uh, uh, are right now they're suing relaxer companies because relaxers are, are causing ovarian cancer uterine cancer and breast cancer and brain cancer so and, and this is really sad because i use i use a uh, uh, Relaxer all my life. I actually, I stopped doing relaxers on 2020 and I finally uh, learned what the pattern of my curls are because I never knew what it was because my, my mom, I'm adopted and my mom was white and she didn't know how to handle my hair. So she relaxed it all the time since I was a little baby. So I didn't know, you know, how to handle my hair until now that I, I use it, I keep doing it and keep doing it. But that's something that I want you guys to stop doing that kind of stuff. Love what the Lord gives you. If the Lord gives you curly hair, it's because of something. And it's nothing more beautiful than curly hair because curly hair is very versatile. If you want it straight, you can just blow it out and flat iron it a little bit, and that's it. But don't have to put all those chemicals in your hair. The same thing goes with perms and keratin. You know, instead of doing that, do some DUI mask. You know, like, for example, when I want to dry my hair, this is what I do. I take I take an avocado, half an avocado, and I match the avocado. I add some olive oil, a, a little bit of castor oil there, and some aloe vera gel, and I mix it all really, 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 really good, and I put that in my hair. And then I put a plastic, and I keep it for maybe two, three hours. I do the, whatever I have to do with the house, cleaning and whatever. I do that on Saturdays. And then I rinse my hair and I don't have to put the chemical stuff. So that's a good thing, a good way that you can do to uh, lower your toxic load when it comes to hair products. The same thing, uh, you can use oils, you know, instead of, of the conditioning and, 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 and leaving conditioners that they sell in the stores. No, use coconut oil or use castor oil and you just put a little bit in your hands and you just put it in the, you know, your ends and stuff like that to protect your hair instead of using all this chemical stuff that they have out there. Purchase natural organic products whenever you can. I know that they are more expensive, 
than uh, buying the cheaper things that you can buy at, at Walgreens or CVS. But try to to use more, you know, uh, organic things, or either buy European, because as you know, as as you heard in the in the in the program in the video, the Europeans banded twelve hundred different chemicals. So everything that they use, even if they even if their products are not natural, even if their products are not natural, they're still a lot more cleaner because the chemicals that they use are not ones that harm your health. Why? Because they banned the 1,200 different ingredients, you know, so they may clean it. So I know a company from Turkey named Pharmacy, and um, my producer is going to put the link there that you can go and they, they sell from beauty products like cosmetics to skincare, different type of skincare, depending on the type of your skin. They sell cleaning products that also, and all of them, they use natural ingredients, they, 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 they sell fragrances and perfumes and cologne, all made with essential oils. All the cleaning products doesn't have any chemical. The skincare doesn't have any chemicals. It's all natural, have natural ingredients. And the cosmetics have clean, clean uh, uh, some have all natural ingredients and some have some chemicals, but they are all chemicals that are not harmful to your health. So that's the link right there that you can go ahead and check it out if you need something in, uh, in, that, in, that, mat, in that way. So you can put the uh, PowerPoint again, please. The next thing that you want to do is you want to use natural ingredients that you probably have in your kitchen. There's a lot of things that you have in your kitchen that you have that you use in your house, even foods that we can use also to take care of our skin and take care of our hair and take care of our face. And even to put color when it comes to cosmetic, you know, like sometimes if uh, you can make, for example, a, a lip balm with coconut oil, a little bit of big wax to make her harder. Okay. And then you can, for color, you can use beets, a, little, a couple of drops of beet juice, and you can make it redder. Or if you want it more brown than redder, then you can mix the, a little bit of, of turmeric with a little bit of beets, and you can get a different color. And you can play with different foods that have uh uh darker colors and make different type of lip balms that are all completely natural because you know that a lot of lipstick have a lot of lead okay and you and the, and the sad thing about this not only you put in your lip but every single time you talk and you eat and stuff like that every time you have lipstick on you you you're swallowing some of it some of that okay and that's going into your system and you know creating havoc in your system so I put you here some recipes so everybody right now take your phone and take some pictures right now because I put some recipes or some of the DIY, uh, uh, DIY recipes that you can do. For example, the first one here is to for basic scrubs. Everybody like to have their skin soft and, you know, take all the dead skins off and stuff like that. So that's a good way to do it uh, and natural, with natural ingredients. This one here gives you a couple of recipes of natural masks that you can use for your skin. So instead of having to use, you know how we love, and I, and I see this all the time, we all love going to the dollar store and getting those paper masks. Have you ever read the ingredients? You cannot even pronounce anything of there. And then they said that they, it's an avocado mask and they have everything but avocado. Or they say that it's a honey mask and you have everything but honey. It doesn't even smell like honey. You know, so it's better for you to make natural things. And then here's a recipe for deodorant if you want to make deodorant. So what are some of the ingredients that you have in your home that are a great substitution for many of the toxic products? We have coconut oil. And let me tell you something. Coconut oil is very versatile. You can use it for so many things. I use coconut oil to remove my makeup. I use coconut oil to do, I, I mix coconut oil and baking soda and I use it as a scrub in my, in my, for my skin. Then I use the coconut oil to remove my makeup. I use coconut oil to do uh, mouth pulling because coconut oil is great for your gums and for mouth health. So you just put a, take a teaspoon of coconut oil and if you have any irritation in your gums, you might want to put a couple of drops of oregano oil there maybe one because oregano oil is very strong. Maybe one drop or two drops, and you just switch it in your mouth for about you know from five to fifteen minutes. That's oil pulling, yes, oil pulling, and and that 
excellent. You can use coconut oil for your hair. I use it in my hair in different in different ways. I can do a hot oil treatment where I let it melt and heat a little bit, put it on my hair, and then put a, a plastic bag, and that's a whole treatment. I use it on a daily basis for my ends, so I make sure I keep my ends moisturized and healthy. Or if I do a protective style, like any braids and things like that, I like to put some coconut oil to protect my my thing. I use it in the skin. Uh, to moisturize my skin some, uh, uh, as well. I also use it uh, in a scrub. Sometimes I don't do the whole, um, I just take a scrub and I put a little bit of, of sugar and a little bit of, of sea salt and I use it as a scrub to scrub my feet, for example. Or if I use it with only sugar if I'm doing my whole body because I, I feel the salt is kind of harsher than the, than the sugar to uh, uh, you know exfoliate my skin. The, the also, you know, like I said, it can be used for your hair, it can be used for your skin, it can, and then you can make your, your uh, lip balms with the coconut oil as well, and lipstick with coconut oil as well. So there's so many uses for coconut oil. Moisturizer for your hands, many uses. Olive oil, the same. You can use it in your hair. You can use it in your skin. You can use it for your mouth as well. And of course, you use it for your cooking and everything, but it's uh, you have a lot of uses as well. Almond oil, especially for your skin, is great. And if you're making any, you, you can use olive oil, coconut oil, and almond oil as a carrier oil if you want. Meaning that you can add an essential oil to create to create a fragrance or or to make sure to you know to um reinforce whatever it is that you need for your skin with the properties that that particular uh. Uh, essential oil has and then you can have argan oil and castor oil is really good for your hair and then b wax is used when you want to make the cream harder like like for example for the lip balms for example then you need to use the b wax for certain creams you also use it to, to make the consistency a little bit harder but that's a natural thing a natural ingredient okay so you can use it for so many things and then you got like honey. Honey, you can use it for your face. You can use it for your hair. You can use it for your skin. You can use it for mask. You can use it. All, you can add it in your scrubs. You can make soaps. I mean, there's a lot of things you can do with uh, with, with, with raw honey and glycerin. is also a natural ingredient and it's very cheap. You can find a bottle of vegetable glycerin for maybe five dollars or something like that. And that you can use it. To, I, what I use it the most is to make my my vitamin c serum i use it the most to make my vitamin c serum and it's incredible then shea butter and cocoa butter to make lotion uh, and, and body butter incredible to use to use it for that then you have vitamin e you know that your skin need vitamin e and vitamin c and vitamin a the vitamin a is a precursor to make collagen as well as vitamin c and retinol vitamin a to make retinol and vitamin c to make collagen and vitamin e gives the moisture to your skin so those things you can you can have it in pills in the house and you just add it to your to whatever it is that you're making according and vitamin c is something let me tell you something whenever you go and buy a skin cream that they say oh it's a vitamin c cream have you noticed that usually that vitamin c cream when you look at it is either color beige or yellow you know why it's color uh, beige or yellow? Because uh, 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 vitamin C have a, a, a very short uh, uh, shot, uh, shelf life, okay? So when it oxidizes, it gets yellowish or brownish. So that's why the colors of the creams are usually that color because that's what happened. And the thing is that the cream's still good because all the other ingredients are well in the cream, but it, you know you don't want to get the, the, the properties and the benefits of the vitamin C because the benefits oxidize. But if you make it at home, you know, it's much better. And I, I do it even better because what I do is I take oranges peel and I dehydrate the oranges peel and I ground it into, into a, a powder. And then I can use that powder to make my vitamin C and right there. It's fresh. I usually already have my moisturizing cream. And if I want a little boost of vitamin C, I usually use it at night because you don't want to use uh, vitamin C in the face during the day and then get the sun because it will stain your, 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 your skin. So I will put a little bit of the powder to my moisturizer lotion for at night and I put it on. You know, and the, and that's all natural, and it doesn't have any ingredients for like the one because even when you buy the vitamin C pills, you need to make sure that it's naturally made, and you know that doesn't have any extra chemical. That it's only ascorbic acid or ascorbic acid, nothing else. 
Okay, because you know, otherwise they put all the different things. Another thing that you want to make sure you have at home, at home is which hazel or rose water. They're good and estrogen. You know, especially if you have a, a oily skin to remove the oil of your skin, or if you have acne, it's, it's, it's very good so that you can, um, you know, um, balance the pH of your skin. So that's a good thing to have at home. And both things, you know, the rose water might cost you maybe $6 in a health food store, or you can make it yourself. Every single time your husband brings you flowers, when the flower is just before, you know, before, the, the, when he bring you roses, before they go bad, you just take the petals out and you can boil them in in a um, in distilled water and you can make the, your your rose water. And then you can put some essential oil of, of roses there to add more effect. And you make you can make your own rose water, or you can go and buy it at the health food store. And then baking soda. Baking soda is also very necessary. You use it in the house for many things, so it's good for you to have it to add it to your scrub. Like if, you might, if you're making a scrub that is for your face, you wanna use the baking soda. You don't wanna use the, the sugar, you don't wanna use the salt or anything like that because they're too abrasive for the skin in your face. So you wanna use the baking soda. So usually the way that, because I have dry skin, okay, when I do the scrub, I do, I mix one teaspoon of baking soda with one teaspoon of coconut oil and I mix it really good. And that's what I what I use as my, as my, uh, exfoliator for my face so and you can use also for toothpaste and for deodorants and essential oils essential oils is is the best because the essential oils you can they have different properties all the different essential oils one are anti-wrinkle the other ones have make you build collagen the other ones uh is going to help you with the uh you know boost the 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 skin color things uh, and make sure that everything is even so depending on the properties of the essential oil you can add it into your whatever thing that you make it and then what are the foods that you have at home that you can also use you can use avocados avocados you can use it in mass for your face and your hair and your skin papayas strawberries lemons okay you can also use herbs like turmeric oregano and cloves you know for those of you over here that are listening to me and you are trying to grow your hair and you're having bald spots or you are you have receding um, he, um, headlines in here or whatever uh, uh, because of relaxer or different things, if you take two, ta two, two teaspoons of, of uh, cloves, you take about three branch, little like branches about this, this uh, long of rosemary, okay? And you boil it in water, in a cup of water, you boil it really good, boil it really good until everything is, is about for 15 minutes. You let it boil there until the water is and then you can put it in a in a little spray bottle and you can spray it in your in the in the area that you are bold in your scalp. And that do wonders. And then if you want to do it as an oil instead of a, uh, instead of a, if you want to do it as an oil instead of a spray, what you can do is that you can put either olive oil or coconut oil. You put it in the stove, but you put it in a in a in a in a pot with water. You put you put a towel at the bottom of the pot, and then you put a, a basin that is made out of glass, and you put your teaspoon of of coconut oil and maybe an, uh, a teaspoon of olive oil, and then you put your cloves in there, and and then you you make sure you cut the rosemary reveal. A small so it can be there and you let it like kind of cook a little bit but it's it's not cooking for so much and then you put it in a dark bottle when you when you drain it and put it in a, in, a, in, a, in a dark bottle with a dropper let it sit for maybe two three days and then it's ready to for you to oil your scalp that's something great that you can do when it comes to the rosemary with the papaya you can do uh it's a good it's a good exfoliator too because you, know, you have uh, enzymes and the enzymes are going to eat up all the dead skin so that's why the that, uh, way that you can use it for your for your face and lemons you can also use it for your face lemons you can also use it to detox your armpits if you decided i'm not going to use commercial deodorants anymore i'm going to use uh you know natural deodorants there's one brand out there that i like a lot it's called lumi l-u-m-e uh, and those work perfect with me um, but if you want to to change to natural deodorant, you need to detox your armpits first. That means you got to get all the aluminum and all the garbage that you put on for the other deodorants out first. And remember that we have glands, lymph nodes glands there that are full of the stuff that, that need to clean and drain. So you're going to be doing 
a detox with either lemon or you can use uh, uh, some uh, uh, bentonic clay, bentonic clay with lemon juice and sage. And you put it in your armpit and you let it dry and then you remove it. And you have to do that a couple of times so that the natural deodorant work on you. Okay. So you can put the, the, the uh, PowerPoint back, producer. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, also, for example, flax seeds. Flax seeds are uh, excellent. You can make gel. You know you can make hair gel from flax seed? You just have to boil in water until it gets uh, like a gel, and then you just drain it to get the seeds out, and you just have the gel, and you have natural hair gel for your hair. Okay, and oats are great if you have eczema. It's great if you have psoriasis to make it, you know, you can put it, you can uh, put it in your cocoa butter, in your lotion, uh, in, in, in your, you know, skincare also. Uh, what you do is that you take it and you get, you know, your coffee grinder and you grind it into a fine, fine, very fine powder. And then you can soak your oils in it and get all the nutrition out of the oils. And then you drain the oil and then you make your cream with, with it. But you can use it, like I said, for psoriasis, for eczema. You can use it uh, for very dry skin. People that have vitiligo, it, it, it must dry the areas that are more dry. I mean, you can use it for a lot of things. And then coffee. Coffee, I love coffee. You know what I do with coffee? I take coconut oil and I do like, like I, do, I put the pot with water and I put a, a, a towel in it. And then I put a, like a spoon of, of, of coconut oil in a little, you know, glass little uh, plate and then i put like a half a teaspoon to a teaspoon of of uh of coffee and i let the 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 coconut oil soak all the coffee all the coffee okay and when they soak all the coffee and then you know, i leave it i leave it there maybe 20 minutes then i take it on i wait until it cools down when it cools down a little bit okay then i put some um uh i take one capsule of vitamin e one or two castle of vitamin E, and then I put some frankincense and some rose hip essential oil. And that is my eye, under eye cream, under eye cream. Because I, when, when you wake up in the morning and you have the big bags in your eyes, the coffee uh, 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 make it, you know, shrink and make your, 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 your skin look like bright. You can also use coffee in a scrub. Where you use it for a scrub, instead of adding, that, uh, uh, depending on how much sugar it says that, that you're supposed to put, you put half the sugar, half the coffee, and the coffee helps with the cellulite. Okay? So that you see, that we have a lot of things in the kitchen that we can use instead of using all those chemical things that, that, that we usually use. And that way we can reduce our toxin exposure. Okay? So let's go to the next one. Okay, so now the next tip is, Shop for cleaners, laundry detergent, and personal care products, la uh, uh, products labeled fragrance free. Warning on scented, the ones that are labeled on scented does not always mean fragrance free. Because when they're being on scented, that means that they don't smell like flowers or they don't smell like cinnamon or they don't smell like this, but they put like a plain type of scent. They use some kind of chemical to create that plain, you know, whatever kind of, 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 of smell. To it. What happened with these fragrances is that they use tons and tons. There are millions of ingredients that they can use, hundreds of ingredients that they can use to make their fragrances, and they have no responsibility or no, and, and they're not legally allowed to, to disclosure what they're using because remember, they have a patent for that particular smell, and they don't want everybody else to know that that's their smell, so nobody copy with it. But in the meantime, they put in so many chemicals in there. They they put chemicals there that cause infertility, that cause uh, issues with uh, reproduction organs, that cause allergy, that cause asthma. So you want to use things that doesn't have any that 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 doesn't have any fragrance. Okay, if, if those things that we use at the house for for spray and things like that, you don't want to use uh, thing, uh, uh, you know Fabrice and candles and all that good stuff that we put in the house. Mm -mm -mm. Those things have chemicals that are causing pro uh, uh, problems with your lungs and with your breathing. So you want to remove all those things as well. Okay, so um, 
what ingredients can you use? Of course, you want to use essential oils because essential oils are going to give you natural, natural uh, uh, smells of different flowers and different plants and that have uh, natural uh, uh, smells. So you want to really use organic therapeutic grade essential oils. You don't want to use the one that you go to the dollar store or Walmart, you know, when you go to the car, to the uh, Walmart, to the candles area, they have some oils that they call it essential oils. They have tons of chemicals that they're not really essential because they're not cold pressed and they're are not going through all the rigorous things that essential will go through. So do not buy those neither at Walmart. You don't want to go buy that on Walgreens, none of those stuff. You want to go to a helpful store or you either want to go to either doTERRA, Young Living, or Revive. And those you can buy it online. You know, or if you have somebody, a, 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 a representative from one of those companies that you can go ahead and get your, your, um, uh, you know, essential oils from them. Another thing that you can do also, if you want to make your house smell really good, you can put flowers in the house and that will make your house uh, smell really good. Okay. There's some oils that the other day I was washing in some DIY and they did uh, where they put, you know, water and flowers and then they put a little bit of oil in the top. Okay. And, and, and with the smell of the essential oil, and then they put a little um, lighting thing and it light like a candle, but it's water, just the water and the flour and, and the oil and, it's, and it still smell the house beautifully and doesn't have none of the chemicals that a, a candle, you know, the Yankee candles or whatever candles you buy at the regular store or anything like that. Yes. Hi, Miss Darlene. Thank you for being here. And, and, and Miss uh, Veronique too. I'm so sorry. I, I, I'm into the into the topic, and uh, I forgot to say hi to everybody. But hi to everybody. Welcome to everybody. I'm so happy that you're all here, and listen and take pictures, especially to the recipe, so that you can make it at home. Okay, okay. You can put the PowerPoint again, please. Also, you can boil herbs. And have, have you ever seen when you're baking an apple pie, for example, the smell that lives in the house, or when you're cooking something delicious, the good smell that lives in the house. So you can do the same thing. You can boil some spices, uh, apples and cinnamon, or uh, cinnamon and, and oranges, uh, or lemons, and, and what you know, something like that. And you can make the house smell so good, so good. And that will, that's another thing that you can do to make the house uh, smell so good. Another thing that, that uh, you can do is you can make your own uh, uh, freshener spray. It's, and also, when you buy detergent and you buy softener, don't buy downy or, or those softeners. Those softeners, they all have tons of chemicals that are not good for you. Okay, you can go to this. There's companies, you know, and that's a little harder to make, you know, a uh, 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 clothes softener or, or detergent, but you can go to places like Maleluca that they can have, they have uh, greener. And even nowadays you can go to a Publix, for example, uh, or Whole Foods store and find detergents and, and, and uh, clothes softeners that are free of parabens, free of, uh, of chemicals, all green products. And, and, and then you want, because the, things, the thing is that you think that because the clothes wash with that, and it's already dry, that is not there. But those chemicals are still in the, the smell is still in the clothes and you're smelling that and you're inhaling those things. And the chemicals are still in the clothes, okay? So it's very, very important that you know that. So another thing that you wanna do is that you wanna open the windows in your house because here in Florida, I don't, I don't know how it is where you are, but here in Florida, we live inside the house in, in the house, 90% of the year is all closed the windows that we're in the air condition. So 90% of the time, the, the air inside your house is dirtier than if you stand outside. Because you, you breathe in the same air over and over because you have all the windows closed and everything closed. So every once in a while, open those windows. Let that fresh air come into the house and out of the house and circulate. And turn on the fan so that the air can circulate even more. Make sure... That you cleaning the, the that you if you have central air like most of the house here in Florida and in, in, in a lot of states in the United States, make sure that you're changing those filters and make sure that you use medical gray, HEP, HEPA, uh, HEPA, is that it called? HEPA, HEPA, uh, 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 filters so that capture more of the bacteria, more of the viruses and things like that that can be running in the house. Another thing that I always tell people, people, do you know? Why is it that the toilet has a lid? The toilet have a lid so that you can keep it closed 
Why? Because after you use the toilet, remember, you use the toilet, you release toxins and garbage out of your system that your body doesn't need. That means that those are toxic things that are going into the bathroom. And those toxins have smells, so that means they have toxic, toxic gases going around the bathroom. Okay, and then you go and leave that door. I always, I always fight it everywhere I go. Why they leave the lid open? Close that lid because that, that that as soon as you stand up from the toilet, close that lid. You you don't need to go back and look what you're doing or anything like. You just close that lid and flush the toilet because when you flush in the toilet, you're removing all that all that air. The stuff is coming out with all those toxins, and you, and you, while you're there, you're smelling. The person that go back, in, you know, behind you in the bathroom, they're smelling all that stuff. Not only smelling, but receiving all the chemicals that, that 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 is spreading out. So please close the lid of your bed. And then another thing that I always tell people: please don't take your phone into the toilet because what happens is that you take the phone into the toilet. And a lot of people do this: they take the phone into the toilet, they are reading or watching the video, watching Facebook while they're sitting in the toilet. They finish their business, they clean themselves. And then they have to put the phone now. They touch the phone with their dirty hands. Now they go, they wash their hands, and now they grab the phone. I want to know, whoever is watching this, they can write in the comments, how many of you, okay, wash the phone when you get out of the door? I mean, clean it out, wipe it out, or do something before you get out of the I watch people sometimes, and they never do that. So the, the, the phone catches all those all those uh, gases and everything that drop into it and, and the fact that you clean yourself in the dirty hand one in it too also. And and you keep going around with that phone everywhere. And you know, the, mo the most dangerous uh, bacteria that you can get from your feces is E. coli. E. coli is normal in your intestine, but when it goes out of your intestine, can cause havoc into your body, it can kill you, okay? So please, please, please close the lid. So the air in your bathroom, and only in your bathroom, because if you leave the door open in your bathroom, then that air is coming out in the, in the house, okay? So it doesn't spread everywhere. <laughs> okay, so uh, you can put the next one. <laughs> and another thing that you can do for the refrigerator, for example, you can put a box of baking soda. And the baking soda in the bathroom is going to capture all the dirt. And every all the uh, smells in there in the refrigerator. Another thing that you want to do to make sure that you don't get all the toxin and herbicide is that people usually come from the drugstore and they put up everything in the refrigerator. And then when they take it out, they wash it. Don't do that because that means that there's more time that you gave to those germs and bacteria and herbicide and pesticide to be stuck into your into your uh into your produce. You want to wash your products, you know, in, in a solution of water and baking soda or solution of, 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 of vinegar and water. Clean them all real quick, real, you know, real good. At least soak them for 10 minutes and then clean them all and then dry them all and store them appropriately where they're supposed to be. You can, if you want to prep in there and cut it and, you know, put it in servings. And if you know that you're going to use this one, you know, in slices because you're going to stir fry it and this one in cubes because you're going to do soup or whatever, do all that at that point. Because remember that even when you buy organic, a lot of people touch the vegetables in the, in the, in the, in the supermarket and you don't know if they wash their hands when they went to the bathroom and they're touching and grabbing and, and coughing on it and all that stuff, even if it's, if, even if it's uh, organic. So you need to clean everything before you put it in the refrigerator because now you're contaminated the refrigerator and everything else in the refrigerator is going to get contaminated. Okay. That's something very important that you need to know. Okay. So here I gave you two, uh, no more than two, uh, recipes here that make sure you take pictures, ladies and gentlemen, ambassadors, take pictures here and of natural perfume that you can make. I know it didn't come so clear, but I know when you expand that, you're going to see it better. And then uh, uh, two recipes of also, uh, air fresheners that you can make at home as well. You need a minute, and long, a minute longer so you can take a picture. Okay, if not, you can just come back to the to the thing. Another thing that you want to avoid is antibacterial hand soap and hand sanitizer. And cleaning products are, are an, antibacterial because they contain something called, I cannot pronounce it right, quaternary. It's ammonium compound. Check in the front of the label and avoid all these products and all ingredients that have the ammonium chloride at the end of the word, like benza, the benzalconium chloride. Because those things, that this particular type of ingredient irritate your skin, 
and can irritate your lungs. It can cause a link to asthma and to infertility. And when it's overused, when it's overused, when antibiotic is overused, then it, it, it causes resistant, uh, resistant, uh, antibiotic resistant uh, bacteria. You know, that means that the bacteria are no longer responding to antibiotic. So listen to me. What do you think that happened during pandemic? That we were washing our hands and putting the, the, the gel over and 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 now. And, and then the, 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 because we don't want to say the disease here now with everything going on. Uh, it damaged your lungs anyway. And now you're putting all this stuff to avoid it. And then white people got more sick. The, 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 the lungs were already weakened because of all the gel that you were using to clean your hands all the time, all the time, all the time. Now when you got the disease, the, 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 the virus, now your lungs is it, going worse. You know, I, I, sometimes I think, sometimes, and it's my thought, okay, no man like a, a, a broska, okay, my thought, okay. Sometimes I think that everything was planned in that order for a reason. They are killing us slowly. That's what I say. Okay, let's go to the next. Can you, okay, perfect. Perfect. And then how to make your own sanitizer. I put a recipe here real quick so that you can see. Take a picture. Everybody take a picture. Hi, Miss Darlene, Ambassador Darlene. Thank you so much for being here. Here, take a picture of it so you can see how to make your own sanitizer and also how to make your own hand, hand soap. So you can make it at home and you don't have no, no problems. And, and with the chemicals or anything like that. So you can use, if you can see that you can use uh, aloe vera and you need alcohol and you need uh, whatever, either lemon juice or whatever mixture of uh, essential oils that you want to use. And also with the uh, uh, making your hand soap, you're going to need distilled water. You're going to need castile soap. Castile soap is a soap that is completely natural. You can usually can find it at a health food store or a whole food store. And uh, you're going to need some grapeseed oil. If you don't have grapeseed oil, you can add almond um, almond oil instead, and it will do the same um, the same job. Okay. Another thing that you need to avoid. This is tip four. Is use glass jars and ceramic bowls to store your food, as well as to store all your all the DIY things that you're going to make for yourself. Use glass containers. Okay, everything use glass container because when you put plastic in the microwave, when things sit down and sit on plastic for so long, for so long, what they do is that they the 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 plastic sweat all those chemicals in, in into the into the into the food. And if you heat it in the microwave or you put the those plastic in the uh, dishwashing machine, it's even worse. So you never want to microwave anything in plastic. You want to, if you have plastic container because you don't have any other choice, you want to make sure that you wash them by hand, never in the washing machine because, like I said before, it's going to, you know, distill all the things, all the chemicals. It's going to leach all the toxins into your food, okay? And even when they say that they they are, you know, the okay with BPA, that alternative that they have for no BPA is still not good for our health. So everything that you're gonna make at home for yourself, anything, even water, you, you have no idea. You buy a bottle of water out there in plastic, and then you have no idea from the time that they bottle up, okay, that they put it in the truck to, to be in the warehouse. You have no idea how long it went into the warehouse. So then they take it to the store. So it goes in the back of the store, uh, store warehouse. You don't know how long it was there. Then it goes, then it goes there. And it goes into the aisles, okay? And then you buy it, and then you leave it in your car, in your car trunk for I don't know how long, okay? Before you take it home and drink that water. That water is full. It doesn't matter if it's Fiji or the or the expensive one. Now that now you can find uh, uh, alkaline water in the store, which is a good thing, but they're in the plastic container. So if you buy it in the plastic container and then you sit it in the, in, in 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 your trunk, you let it have heat, heat in your trunk, especially in the heat summers of Florida. That's it. You already contaminated that water. So I always say, buy, there's there's a water, I, I think it's, the brand is SOS, if I'm not mistaken, of alkaline water that come in a glass container. Okay, one thing is $5. That's a lot for water, okay? But at least I buy that first one water there, and then from, from now on, then, you know, 
fill your refill your bottle and always have it in a glass container. Either glass container or stainless steel. You want to store your food in either glass containers or stainless steel. Okay, that's very 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 important. Let's go to the next one. When we come when it comes to cooking, when it comes to cooking, okay, you don't want when if you have Teflon uh, cookware at home, if you have Teflon cookware at home. Please do not cook in high heat on Teflon uh, cookware because that Teflon chemicals are going to come into your food. It's, that chemical is called, I can't pronounce it, it's a very long name, so it's PFOA. You can see there in the third point, it releases, let me see if I can pronounce it, perflu, perfluoro, octan, I can say it. So PFOA. If you cook in there, you're frying in those pans. And you cook in higher degrees, then those those chemicals are gonna leak into your into your pans, okay? And the same thing happen if you cook in aluminum uh, cookware. You don't want to use aluminum cookware because aluminum cookware can cause diseases. Uh, it, it, it stored the, the the body accumulate the aluminum, uh, especially if you boil water. Let's say you boil water in an aluminum. If you notice an aluminum cookware, when you boil water, the the whatever the level of the water was, it leaves. Uh, the the pot get darker because it's leaching some of the aluminum into your water that you're boiling to cook whatever you say you're boiling some eggs or you're boiling some some um, potatoes or whatever to make mashed potatoes or whatever all that is going in so you don't want to have that type of cookware you want to have either stainless steel cookware or cast iron cookware that's the kind of cookware you want to have in the house and your utensils you know Everybody like to go to the dollar store and get those utensils for the dollar store. The utensils for the dollar stores are made out of aluminum. That's why you, you drop it in the floor and they break. Okay, and then you have the plastic ones that still have all the chemicals and the PVA and all that stuff. You don't want to use none of that for your food either. Okay, so it's very important for you to know that. Okay, I'm almost done, people. I know today was a little longer than usual, but this is good information I wanted to give you all. So that's why it's a little longer. And then... This is how the aluminum cookware, you know, where it says no. This is how aluminum cookware usually look. They are thin, okay? They have color outside, and then the inside have the aluminum or the Teflon, or they have the Teflon inside. And usually, this kind of cookware costs you anywhere from, from $35 to $200. But if you want a good stainless steel cookware, you're going to go into the thousands, okay? But that's a purchase that you do once. And they last you forever. I, I have the same the same the same uh cookware over 20 something years and they're staying still. And the cast iron are not are not expensive. Those you can you can buy a pan maybe $50, $20. And if it's a bigger pot, then maybe $30, $35. But usually they sell it in, uh, separate instead of in a bundle of cookware. Okay, so you can put the next one. And what about chemicals outside of your house? So I was, I tell you to take your shoes before entering your house because there's a lot of garbage, a lot of chemicals, a lot of toxins, a lot of uh, uh, pet poops outside and things like that that happen. People spitting, uh, spitting food, people vomiting in the floor. All this thing happen in the floor out there and you're bringing that into your shoes, into your house, especially here in Florida, a lot of houses have carpet. And you're bringing that into the carpet. And something about carpet is that it doesn't matter how much you clean carpet, there's always, it might look clean, but the dirt is embedded in, 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 in those hairs, in those inside. And you bring in all the toxins. So make sure that you maybe have a shoe rack at the entrance where you can leave your shoes there when you come in into the house and you can leave the shoes there so that you don't bring all this garbage in from the outside in, into the inside of the house. Okay. okay, okay, and then um, you want to make sure that you have like a, a mat and the, a, at the entrance so that people can, you know, clean their hands. And then I've already mentioned about uh, the HEPA filters for the house if you have, you know, uh, air conditioning. And also you want to use uh, the also the dust in your house. The dust is made out of some of the bacteria and stuff like that. You want to make sure that you dust frequently the house. Another thing you want to make sure that you do is that you want to, you know, the bedding in your bed, you want to change it at least minimum 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 once a week but i will say every two three days you should change the, the the bedding in your bed as well because you know do you're shedding you're shedding a, a 
you know, all skin and, and material and all that good stuff, go there and you laying over it and over it again, over and over and over. So you don't want to do that. So in order to, you know, reduce, you know, all those toxins, that's another thing that you want to, to do. So make sure, and also when you, like I said, when you're walking outside, you're walking on top of your grass with your shoes and all that, and you bring in the herbicides, the pesticides that you put into your grass, all the chemicals that you put into your plants and all the garbage that, that people put into the street. And those are the things that you want to remove. And this is the last one. So I hope this information was use, was useful for you. I want you to go back and take pictures of all the recipes so you can do it at home. But also you can go to Google and you can Google DIY, whatever you want to create, whatever you can create. And you can even put simple recipe or more, you know, more, uh, more expensive. Remember that when you're creating all these DUI ingredients, you make sure that you wash your hands, that you uh, put gloves, that every container you sterilize it that means that you put it into boiling water with a little bit of vinegar so it's to sterilize the, the 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 stuff you make sure that it dries completely before you put your whatever that you're creating inside the containers and stuff like that, that you label properly because you're not putting any any uh, preservative you're not putting any emulsifiers in it. So if you're making, a, for example, a, a lotion, for example, or you're making a cleaning spray or something like that, when you sit down, you're going to see that it separates. That's going to be completely normal. That's not that it's not damaged. You're not putting an emulsifier there that is going to damage your, your, your health. So those things, and you had to put dates so you don't win, especially the things, the things to clean last forever practically. But the things for your skin and stuff like that, they have dates accordingly to the products that you're using. Okay, so you want to make sure uh, that usually when you're making skincare products, if you add vitamin E on it, if you add cinnamon on it, if you add citric acid or, or, or yeah, citric acid or ascorbic acid, that can you that 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 can be used as a preservative, okay, into it. But that doesn't mean that anyway it lasts. And another thing is that when you make a lotion and a cream and things like that for your skin, you want to make sure that you use it with a pump container. Because you don't want to put your dirty hands in something that doesn't have any antibiotic or anything like that and contaminate it and let bacteria grow. You don't want water to fall in it either because you will contaminate it. So you want to make sure that when you make uh, your cream, your lotion, your body lotion, things like that, you either have a, a, a wooden spoon that you can use to, to grab the amount that you're going to use, put it in your hands and close the container and use that. Okay, or use a pump. That way, if it is a pump, nobody's going inside the container. No water gets into the container. Your dirty hands doesn't get into the container, and then you'll be able to use it for your skin, your your, your hair, whatever it is that you're doing with your body. So remember, people. Okay, that the reason why we're doing this health bulletin is because we are ambassadors. That means if we ambassadors, we have to represent the kingdom of God here. And in kingdom, in the kingdom of God of heaven, there's no disease. In the kingdom of God of heaven, everybody's healthy and whole, okay? And they're able to do whatever their purpose it is over there. So we need to be able to do the purpose that we need to do here so we can expand the kingdom of God so that Christ can come back and capture us and take us with him. So we need to make sure that we stay healthy, okay? So that we can fulfill the purpose and the assignment that God has given for our life. And also remember that the doctor is, is responsible for your sick care, but you, yes, you are responsible of your health care. See you next week. Bye.